much. I am really excited to be here, uh, to be speaking at this podium. Uh, program director, thank you very much, uh, Dan Dutoy. Uh, and in absentia, Minister Brendan Zimande, thank you very much uh, for the statement that you've made. I think it's quite relevant. Uh, it speaks to the leadership that the department has uh, in terms of science and innovation. I'm excited for a number of reasons. <clears throat> One of which is that um, we get together here after a very difficult time, which is the post-pandemic. And I do hope that we are in the space of post-pandemic um, economic recovery, uh, in which we can all gather here and meet. I think many of us are tired of uh, the virtual meetings uh, and the muted uh, sounds and, <clears throat> and not being able to see friends and colleagues like we do here. But I wanted to share with you a couple of points um, that I think um, are quite relevant for this occasion. So we talked about the economic diplomacy, we talked about science, science diplomacy, and we talked about commercial diplomacy. I wanted to specifically focus on commercial diplomacy and make it relevant and make, it, um, make linkages with, um, <clears throat> with science diplomacy. But I wanted to start with a quote by one of my favorite economists, uh, John Maynard Keynes, once said that you know, the difficulty lies not in the development of new ideas, but rather in escaping the old ideas, uh, which tend to inhibit our minds. And I think that quote, as much as it was said in the 18th century, remains relevant even today. And the reason why I'm saying that is because there are many instances where we talk about uh, the development of new ideas, new initiatives, uh, but quite frankly, we do so without realizing that it is in our ability to escape our own beliefs our own ideas about what we think is correct to do now. The context that we live in, and as I referred to the post-pandemic uh, economic recovery, which does not only talk to South Africa, also speaks to the fact that we faced a myriad of challenges as a as South Africa firstly, uh, as a continent, but as a global uh, society as well. But we also live in exciting times. Um, and, and part of the reason why I'm really excited about this initiative, which I would dare say that as much as we talk about it as science uh, diplomacy initiative, we should also consider it as science, technology, and innovation diplomacy. And the reason why the two, the latter two, technology and innovation diplomacy, are quite key and critical for us is simply because there is no way you could ever consider economic recovery or you could ever consider industrialization without the two, which is technology and innovation. And I'm quite excited that we are here at the, at the CSIR, uh, which is, as you know, the biggest uh, industrial research institute in the continent, which talks to the importance of technology development, which talks to innovation as a drive of industrialization. And coming from the Department of Trade and Industry and Competition, it is quite key and critical that we have those two at the heart of any agenda which talks to economic recovery, technology and innovation. We do live in the fourth industrial revolution. Many of you are quite aware of the, of the challenges that we face uh, in, the, in, in, in the country, which obviously may require us uh, to adjust and obviously implement uh, some of the technologies that would make us much more capable, competitive in the digital economy that is currently with us, not coming up, currently with us. So digital economy, knowledge economy, and I do hope that this particular initiative will, as it embraces the role of science, also embrace the role of technology and innovation, and also push an agenda around technology, innovation, diplomacy, which is quite critical uh, for us to, uh, to develop. The content obviously dealing with the challenges that we are facing. Uh, you know, the, the, the current energy security that we challenge, we, we are facing as a challenge, uh, which many of us would ultimately look at ESCOM <coughs> and say that um, we have a challenge with, uh, with one of our institutions, but I don't, I don't think that we were looking at it from the perspective of ESCOM as being a, a problem in the house. I think the, the challenge that we face is one of energy security, and for which 
we hope that initiatives such as this will begin to look at. Food security, another critical factor. Water security, another critical uh, challenge that we face. Health security, as we just came out of the pandemic, and which has shown that indeed when we do face these kind of challenges, science, technology, and innovation becomes quite critical in ensuring that we support and we rise out of those challenges. But in doing so, we also realize that it's not about the response of science to these challenges, or it's not the response of um, it's not the response of of science and research to these challenges that is key. It's also because the response of science, technology, and innovation to this key actually also helps us expose the opportunities that we have. There are many businesses, there are many opportunities that have been exploited by the challenges that we faced as a result of the pandemic. We do know that we are able to identify some of the key competitive aspects that we have as a country as a result of the challenges that, that, that we, we face in, in COVID-19. And I'm mentioning this specifically to make a direct link that as much as we've been able to come out of the pandemic and we've been able to, to advance and, and showcase the very excellent scientific capabilities that we have as a country, in doing so, we've also been able to see a rise of small medium enterprises that have taken up the opportunity, that have had an interest in the pharmaceutical sector and have shown themselves to be ready to compete in the world with the best of the world in terms of biotechnologies that they are thinking about or innovations that they are, they are fostering in the small corners that, that they are. Commercial diplomacy for South Africa is a critical factor, is a critical intervention because it also enables our companies, small medium enterprises to advance not only as small medium enterprises, but to actually mature into big multinational companies. It is always interesting to know that at the end of the day, as much as we talk about science, technology, and innovation, we also forget that the South Africa's products, services, and the ability of South Africa's products and services to compete globally is actually embedded and relies on capabilities around science, technology, and innovation. It could be in terms of meeting standards in different countries. It could be in terms of uh, ensuring that it outcompetes other products from other parts of the world. But at the heart of it is whether or not that those products are innovative, those products are able to meet uh, international standards, technical standards, and so forth and so on. So I'm just mentioning these examples just to indicate that as much as we talk about science, technology, and innovation, <coughs> diplomacy, there is a critical link to it in as far as economic growth and economic development is concerned. So we need this type of platforms to also embody, as they do, not only government to government, not only research to research partnership, but also bear in mind that there is a big component of it which talks to business to business engagement. And I do hope that as we roll out this program and initiative, and together with the, all the partners, our local partners and international partners, will come together to also ensure that, at the very least, the outcomes are actually directly linked to our business community. And I do hope that we not only invite, as we conduct this network and this initiative across the continent, we not only invite researchers and scientists, but we also invite young people, young entrepreneurs, SMEs, as well as a big multinationals that are coming out of the continent to be part and parcel of these initiatives so that there is a direct link between science, technology, and innovation, diplomacy, as well as commercial diplomacy, as well as economic diplomacy as we drive it. You all are aware that we are now entering a critical phase as a continent in terms of our regional economic integration agenda. We are now at the cusp of launching the African Continental Free Trade Area. And I'm saying we're launching it um, simply because we have all signed and ratified when I've seen many African countries have signed up uh, to the Continental Free Trade Agreement, but currently finalizing what we would call uh, the actual, the heart of the Free Trade Agreement, which is the the tariffs and the reduction of the tariff schedules to ensure that many businesses can begin to actually trade under the continental free trade area. There is another component of the continental free trade area that is coming up, which will talk to digital trade. And again, I would like to implore and also 
advise this uh, initiative as it consider its missions, as it consider its agenda, to also bear in mind that as much as we open up the space for continental free trade, uh, intra-Africa trade, there's also new opportunities that are coming up in the context of digital trade that we have seen has accelerated in the last uh, few years as a result of uh, COVID-19. We've seen a high rise of number of e-commerce platforms that have come up uh, to the fore. We've seen many businesses finding many different ways to conduct their business in spite of not being able to travel, in spite of not being able to, uh, to meet with their potential customers in the countries. So digital trade, again, a key component. And again, we'd like to say that as much as we talk about science, technology, and innovation diplom diplomacy, that component of digital trade will rely on this particular initiative to be able to actualize it and drive it. And finally, I would like to, uh, to, to really thank the, the organizers and, and the leadership of the DSI for, putting, uh, for, for leading in developing this particular initiative. I do hope that it will become a legacy project. It will become something that the future generation, the young people, the youth will own and take it up. And I do hope that as much as we're gathered here, as we depart to our respective uh, corners, we'll continue to interact with each other as we develop uh, this particular initiative and make sure that it, it translates into real social economic impact uh, for our people. And that it becomes not only a, a science a diplomacy hub, but it also becomes a knowledge hub, an incubation hub for, for entrepreneurs, for new technologies, uh, for new services and innovative uh, product. But to our international partners, that it also becomes a space in which when you consider aspects of technology transfer in the context of fourth industrial revolution, you will remember this as a place through which you can uh, diffuse your technologies as you seek to cooperate and collaborate with South Africa and in, indeed the entire continent uh, to accelerate the role of science, technology and innovation and put it at the heart of its economic recovery and economic agenda. Thank you very much.